if I may, to the group leaders, and starting with uh, Councillor McIlduff. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Anne-Marie Fitzgerald is an apology for this evening's meeting, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Victor Warrington. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Robert Irvine. Thank you. Councillor Errol Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. No apologies from the Democratic Unionist Party. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor, McGa Councillor Garrity, please. Thank you, Chair. No apologies from ourselves this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And from the single and smaller parties, independent parties, are there any apologies, please? Councillor Stephen Donnelly. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's absent. OK, he's sent an apology. Thank you. OK, members, thank you. Now, moving to declarations of interest, those are live from the declarations that were declared at the last meeting. So we, the purpose of the meeting this evening is to reconvene, to consider the two motions and then to to um, consider the rest of the business on the agenda. So um, I'm going to move to item 13.2. The thank you payment to NHS staff. This motion is proposed by Councillor Erskine and seconded by Councillor Buchanan. Um, as you will see, we have received four uh, proposed amendments to this uh, motion and I'm considered them. And in light of um, the content of two of them, I've made my decision that um, Councillor Curry's and Councillor Warrington's amendments um, are substantial um, body changes and in effect um, I, I'm not permitting those to go ahead as an amendment. So I, I'd invite at this point, I'm going to invite Councillor Erskine um, to read um, her motion and um, she, after that she has five minutes to, um, to speak on her motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Chair. Um, this Council recognises the importance of our National Health Service and the heroic contribution of our health and social care workers and care home staff or workers throughout the pandemic. And we express our thanks for their commitment to and our care for our community and will write to the Health Minister Robin Swan MLA and the Finance Minister Connor Murphy MLA asking them to work together to administer a thank you payment of at least £500 as a practical demonstration of our gratitude. Approximately a year ago, we heard of COVID-19, a condition affecting parts of China, with hospitals overwhelmed and scenes that were really quite frightening. And little did we know back then how COVID-19 would impact upon all of our lives. However, there are those within our communities who have had to deal with the very front line in the attack against COVID-19 and face its realities. While I have worked from home and while others have been furloughed and many others shielded from this awful disease, our nurses, doctors, health and social care workers and care home staff have faced danger day and daily to save lives. Unfortunately, we all know of very sad cases, nurses holding the hands of loved ones of people who've passed away without families with them. I'm sure we've all heard from nurses' stories from the front line. And to me, they're the true heroes of this pandemic. In 2020 and now again, we stand and clap for our frontline workers and join with many others from across the UK in showing our appreciation. But in truth, our clause for the NHS workers and key workers is never enough and we must do more. Our clause for them is empty if we do not adhere to the regulations. And like yourself, Chair, I urge the public now more than ever to stick with these regulations and to adhere to them. I can't begin to imagine the dread staff have had to face each day at work, worried about COVID-19 and its devastating impacts. During the weekend, we've seen urgent calls from the Western Trust and Southern Trust staff to report to work, given the scale of pressure at the hospitals. Expressions or gestures of support will always fall short of what is deserved, but I think it is right that we do something to show our thanks for the service that they have given at this particular time in a more tangible way. 
My motion tonight to request that the Minister for Health and the Minister for Finance work together to give a £500 payment to health and social care workers and our care home workers is a step towards giving them deserved recognition. I must stress, however, that this request to executive ministers does not and should not prejudice or negate in any way annual pay nego deal negotiations or any other ongoing pay increase commitments that may be reasonably sought. My motion, I believe, is one way in which the, the executive on behalf of the people of Northern Ireland can say thank you. I understand the pay negotiations also happen at a national level and we must not mar this with this motion. I think we should accept that Except that as a given, pay increases must be investigated and that this motion would be a payment on top of or separate to that. This is a bonus payment. The thank you payment is something which I believe is within the reach of the Northern Ireland Executive here and now, without depending upon the outworkings of additional commitments from Westminster. And I would share the hopes of many on this council who would like to see better pay job vacancies filled to improve rotas, improvement in existing services progressed. This proposal does not weaken that argument or the needs for all those for, and the, or the needs of all of those things. A thank you payment is something that another devolved administration has committed to and I believe we can do likewise. When it comes to health there should be no petty political point scoring. And I only hope tonight that my motion goes some way to support our health care staff at this very crucial time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Erskine. Um, and this motion is seconded by Councillor Buchanan. Um, Councillor Buchanan, do you want to speak on this? Yeah, I'll be very quick, Chair. Thank okay, you. I invite Just... you to speak. Thank you. Yes. Just to second the motion there um, from my from my colleague, uh, Councillor Armstrong, and thank her for or Councillor Erskine, sorry, for bringing it forward. Um, of course, we have all saw firsthand um, the work and dedication of healthcare staff um, throughout the whole um, sector over this past few months. And um, I would entirely support um, this, this endeavour. They have all stepped up to the mark. And uh, I do trust that we'll receive support on the motion tonight. So thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for that, Councillor Buchanan. Um, right, moving on then, that's the motion um, which has been proposed and seconded. Um, Councillor Gannon, you'd like to say something on this? I just invite you to speak. Yes, Chair, would this be appropriate time to, to raise the amendment? Yes, certainly, yes. Perfect, okay, thank you, Chair. So uh, just to, to, obviously it's there to be read, but just to talk uh, through the amendment after where it says community in the fourth line down of the motion, we delete the rest and we make the following addition and agrees to write to the Northern Ireland Executive for requesting that all NHS staff receive a £500 thank you payment for the dedication and heroism shown and to request an immediate pay review for nursing staff, including student nurses concerning their pay and conditions. So in terms of this uh, motion and amendment, uh, Chair, uh, in early December, it was announced that healthcare, uh, health and care workers in Scotland will be given this thank you payment of uh, £500 for their efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously Wales has since followed suit in that. So it has obviously come up for discussion here, uh, as we as we already know. And I think it's very important to say, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to our health and care workers. Many of us were able to stay safe at home during the pandemic. They were the ones who really, along with other key workers, stepped up and put themselves into harm's way to look after all of us. Health workers have told me that while they appreciate the support from public and gestures such as the clap for carers, what they really need is fair pay and conditions. Given this, I am proposing the following amendment to the motion to include this immediate pay review for nursing staff, including our student nurses who face conditions that are near slave labour at times not getting a penny for their work despite all their efforts. Student nurses in particular pay thousands in tuition, and they, like every other health worker, have been on the front line in the fight against COVID. But even in non-COVID times, nurses and student nurses deserve so much better than what they currently get. They are true heroes in our society today, yesterday, and tomorrow. 
I do find it surprising <clears throat> that the DUP are bringing forward this motion, given their uh, record of voting against pay rises for public sector workers and ending pay parity for uh, and allowing our nurses to be worse off than nurses elsewhere. But uh, regardless of this, I I'm glad to see this motion. I'm glad to see uh, the DUP bringing forward this sort of motion uh, and changing their position on this. Uh, Councillor er Erskine did mention that this will not prejudice any pay review. I, I agree totally with that. Um, and in fact, uh, when it comes to this amendment, I hope that the Councillor will support it and the seconder will support it as well, because obviously she said that her original motion won't uh, impact any pay negotiations. It won't make any um, uh, difference. I think this motion, this amendment strengthens the motion and strengthens our commitment and resolve to deliver better uh, results for our NHS staff. Um, and to, to mention the other amendment that has been uh, permitted this evening, uh, Councillor Coffey's um, amendment, it obviously gives um, a flat figure and a percentage there in it. And I know, um, obviously, this may be a slight uh, point of difference, but I, I believe that, that we shouldn't be... You have 20 seconds. Thank perfect. you. I'm wrapping up. Uh, Preempting any uh, trade union negotiations and uh, if the trade unions do change their position uh, to, to a higher percentage or higher flat rate well we wouldn't want to have the lower flat rate in this motion and uh, we would obviously support the trade unions in their cause for a better pay deal so uh regard uh, i hope that all members can support uh, both this motion and uh, amend and including the amendment tonight thank you chair okay, thank you at uh, that amendment uh, is noted and proposed. Uh, sorry, Chair, point of order? Yes. Uh, point of order. Point of order, please. Uh, uh, point of order is. McGuire, yes. Uh, thanks, Chair uh, Gromer. It's just that uh, procedurally, I think we, we're in error here. We're discussing uh, an amended motion, and the amendment was not agreed by the members. It we, does we're state going, it, we're going um i'm sorry for interrupting you councillor but we're going now to see if it is going to be agreed it, it's going to be proposed and then seconded and then if that's the case it will be put to a vote that's the procedure sorry. i understand councillor well ch chair as as i'm looking through the standing orders here in in, in the loneliness of my own house here uh what has been presented to us and um, with the due seven day notice has been changed and they're now uh, the proposer has has spoken on an amended motion but yet the amendment hasn't been agreed by the members the the original motion which had been sent out to us in advance was agreed for discussion and as your as uh, by yourself but it's been presented to us this evening with an amendment already in it in red writing and Certainly. that that should have been put to the members before it was discussed, I, I would contest. I, um, I pass to the Chief Executive here for clarification, just uh, on please, that point, if you, if you don't mind. Thank you. Chair, I think this is, Councillor Erskine has altered the motion, which is in accordance with standing orders the proposer may alter with the consent of the meeting. So that is what the, the Chair is going to invite following this amendment. So it's, right. it's alteration rather than, than amendment, if, if I'm interpreting uh -huh. the, the councillor's query correctly. Well, uh, uh, the addition of, of new a new sentence, uh, I, w I would contest, was an amendment as opposed to an alteration. But uh, obviously that's up to all members to judge that. But I, I do believe procedurally the original motion should have been put and then or, or should have been... Uh, informed to us in the seven days as usual but the amendment to be added into the the uh the the the, the motion without the the prior agreement of the house that's what i'm contesting there that we should have i because the member has spoken now to the amended motion but yet we haven't adopted the amendment yep. in my chair, interpretation chair no chair just to advise um standing order 19 2 relates to the alteration of a motion a member may alter a motion of which they have given notice as proposed with the consent of the meeting so that the the inclusion as identified uh, the chair had ruled as an acceptable alteration so what we would be proceeding to in the context of the vote would be the proposer's entitlement by way of alteration 
and then the, the members now may cons indicate their consent or otherwise to that. And it says the meeting's consent will be signified without discussion. Okay, happy with that the clarification, uh, Councillor. Our, our consent is agreed without discussion. Uh, that's, I find that strange. Usually any, there's many a dispute about a word or a couple of words in, in motions prior to this, uh, but obviously I give way to your prior knowledge. That's 19.2.2. Yes, the meeting's consent will be signified without discussion. That's in that standing order. Thank you, Councillor. Um, just, um, yeah, just looking for a seconder for Councillor Gannon's amendment, please. Sorry, Chair, uh, Councillor McPhillips. Okay, Councillor McPhillips, thank I, you. I, and are you speaking on this? No, no, I'd just like to second uh, uh, Councillor Gannon's amendment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so point of order, can I ask a question, a procedural point, Councillor Michael Duff here? Um, yeah, can you can you clarify what, what point of order, what what point in standing orders it is, please, Councillor Michael Duff? I would love to have the document in front of me, I don't. Uh, mm -hmm. I've asked for it to be forwarded to me this week, but can I simply ask, on what grounds is uh, the Sinn Féin amendment ruled out, you know, um, Councillor Curry? I... I took that decision because when I reviewed um, the amendment, it's very much along uh, the the message is very much part of the message. There is very much very similar to one of the other amendments. And um, let's see where we are here. And I, I think there was a lot. It, it actually the 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 amount of change in it where it had changed substantially from. The original um, the original motion itself, and similarly with Amendment Four, it there was a um, substantial change too. That the message is still essentially the same. So it really, um, and mentioning the trade unions, uh, it really is similar to what is presented as other amendments. So I took the decision that um, it it would not be um, proposed tonight. Thank you. Point of order, Chair. Yes, Councillor Curry. Under 17.2, um, and it is around um, the amendment that I proposed. Um, Chair, you've just said um, with respect that my amendment was similar to other proposed amendments. So I, I, I don't know how you can make the decision to accept one and not the other. Um, I'm looking at um, standing order 17.2. Um, there is nothing here. Um, it's within the scope of notice. It's not a direct negative. It is relevant to the proposal which it seeks to amend. It's not inconsistent with anything already agreed upon. Um, in section B there, the amendment to the motion shall either be to refer subject to debate, leaving out words to leave out words or and insert or add others. There's no there's no number on that. Um, or to insert or add words. And um, I think um, it is complementing, but actually just going a little bit further than the motion before us. And I think that others are making similar points. And I do feel aggrieved that my amendment um, has been left out. I, I do think it's unjustified, Chair, with respect. OK, thank you. Thank you, but Councillor Curry. Councillor Curry, um, I, you know, I don't want to cause offence, but I think a lot of a lot of what is in it is is covered, um, and I just think I'd refer you to Standing Order Twenty Nine, uh, the uh, ruling of the chairperson. That's my interpretation. Is there is a substantial body there, and um, similarly in Amendment Four, and that um, the the engagement with the trade unions. It's similar. It's a duplication, or it's similar. The message there within that amendment. Um, so, um, with that, I am staying with the two amendments. Thank you. A point yeah. of order, Chair. Yes, uh -huh. Councillor. Uh, Councillor McGuire, just uh, in, in, in further response to the uh, to the issue of an amendment. Uh, on, on my previous inquiry, I was informed it was an alteration to the motion, which is permitted, as I've just read there. But uh, could I ask then that the the minute of this meeting uh, be amended so that uh, at point uh, three point one that it reads alteration to motion by proposer councillor Erskine as opposed to amendment, as it's been indicated to the to me that there hasn't been an amendment, there's just been an alteration. Point three point 
3.1. Yep. Yeah, the, minute, the minute of the meeting would reflect that, uh, that the, the proposer would present the motion as altered. So that would be in the minute of the of the proceedings. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, with respect to executive, what I'm reading on my screen is at point one, amendment to motion by the proposer, mm -hmm. Councillor Erskine. When I, when I questioned the amendment being discussed without uh, being agreed, uh, you did indicate that it was an alteration. On reading uh, the alteration, I, I'm quite happy with that. But uh, again, the, as a member reading that there, were, it does read amendment to the motion, whereas it, strictly speaking, should say alteration to the motion. Sorry, Chair, is this the, the agenda? Sorry, Councillor, yes, that, that it should read, certainly the agenda should read an alteration. I accept that. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor McGuire. Um, the next speaker we have is Councillor Warrington. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm just wondering, do you want, before I speak, uh, do you want to take in the other amendment? Uh, which uh, uh, you're going to listen to, uh, Councillor O'Kofis. Um, and I think we'll deal with the the amendment that has been proposed by Councillor Gannon first. We take them. Um, he was the first speaker to indicate. Okay. So, um, if you want to speak on that amendment, Councillor Warrington. No, I, I will come in. Uh, I will come in after um, Councillor. Councillor, uh, I'll come in at the end of all the amendments then, okay. please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And I'll allow you back in just on that point. Thank you. Councillor Coffey? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I, uh, I want to start out by saying I, I share, obviously, the intent of those apparent intent, anyway, of those who brought forward this emotion, uh, that is to recognise the huge contribution being made day and daily by tens of thousands of health and social care workers standing on the front line in the fight against COVID. But as a cross-community Labour uh, representative, I couldn't allow this motion to pass without an amendment reflecting the position of the trade union movement itself. One year ago, the same NHS workers that London ministers and Stormont ministers are telling us to applaud were forced onto picket lines in freezing weather to fight for basic pay equality. In the end, and through their brave strike action, they won basic pay equality with England and Wales. But this still left them far behind where they would have been if they hadn't, as a whole across the UK, had to endure pay stagnation over the last decade. The particular absence and denial of fair pay in Northern Ireland was a direct contributor to what the staffing crisis which continues to afflict our NHS services. Across the UK, pay, work, pay for NHS workers has been eroded by 15% in the last decade. Frankly, the idea of bringing forward a £500 cash donation as somehow a recompense goes nowhere near what is needed. So, dealing with the motion, I heard the proposer referencing that her proposal does not in any way compromise the pay negotiation, but is an addition to it. The reality is, if business as usual continues in Stormont and London, £500 that we are calling for would be, if achieved at all, would be on top of a measly pay offer, failing to address the long-standing pay shortfalls facing NHS workers. This motion offers this council an opportunity to add its voice to that of the workers themselves to the representative trade unions. Neither the initial motion nor the motion by Councillor Gannon explicitly commits this council to support the workers' own pay demand. And contrary to what Councillor Gannon says, my motion reflects exactly a pay uplift corresponding to that which would meet the demands of all health trade unions. This is an opportunity to do exactly that, and I call on councillors to go beyond demanding a token uplift of a mere £10 an hour, non-consolidated, and instead back what the trade unions themselves are calling for. If we are serious about expressing our thanks, then we need to see this translate into a position in support of a meaningful pay uplift. We need to support the NHS workers and their demand for pay decency. decency. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor. Um, the next person, oh, Councillor McPhillips, um, you have spoken. Councillor Warrington, Councillor Curry, Councillor Green, if you'd like to come in. 
Uh, yeah, uh, just a, a couple of comments. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, um, Councillor Green. I don't mean to cut across you, Councillor Curry. Yes, you are next. You haven't spoken on this on this amendment. Yes, it was just thank you. Thank you earlier, Gurmagad. Okay, yes. I, I am still aggrieved. I, I do think um, that we actually had a, a better position um, on this with our amendment. Um, you know, I, I would, um, as other speakers have said, like to thank. Um, the DUP for bringing the original motion to council. I'd, I'd like to believe it's well intentioned. Um, however, it is somewhat surprising that we have a motion that seeks to show recognition um, to our heroic healthcare workers coming from a party who, as others have said, uh, supported the Tories in back in blocking a pay raise for nurses. And I've also supported the Tories in opposing protections for the NHS against further privatisation. The DUP have consistently supported the neo Thatcherite ideology of the Tories at Westminster, which aims to drive the public towards private health care by starving the NHS of funding and resources. And we're seeing the impact this is having on our overburdened healthcare staff and on our overburdened healthcare service as a whole. Uh, not least uh, most recently. There is still no sign of the £350 million a week that Brexiteers were claiming would go to the NHS. So to me, the motion, uh, and to Sinn Féin, the motion from the DUP uh, smacks uh, of paying lip service, uh, and it's really too little too late. Uh, apart from us as individuals doing everything we can possibly do to protect our healthcare workers, and following the stay at home and, and if we must go out uh, the hand space face guidelines. The best way to value health and social care workers is through a fully funded, fair and decent pay award negotiated through their health trade unions. And that is an important point uh, for us and the provision of safe staffing levels underpinned with safe staffing legislation. Sinn Féin are in, a, in support of an award for our healthcare workers to recognise the situation which they're currently under immense pressure working in, but it can't uh, take place the place of a fully funded pay award, and we need to state that clearly. Um, I take um, Councillor Erskine making that point verbally. I think it should have been in the motion if that was the intention. Um, I think um, just in regards to the other motions, um, and as I say, ours was slightly different than the other two amendments that you have accepted, Chair, and I am really sorry um, that you've done that because the trade unions, as I said, are important uh, player in this, um, but it's not for us to be setting what the percentages are. That's for the trade unions on behalf of the workers uh, to come to that agreement with the minister. So that is our position. Um, and uh, that's all I really have to say about it. I'm very disappointed, Gurmogat. Thank, thank you, Councillor Curry. Um, Councillor Green. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Curry has probably made a lot of the points that I was uh, thinking of making myself. So I will cut my contribution very short. I just want to re-emphasise one of the points Councillor Curry made about the uh, vote in Westminster. And let's not forget, when that vote in Westminster took place, uh, scandalously, uh, the DUP and Tory MPs stood up and cheered when they voted against and won the vote to uh, block up their rise for the, uh, the nurses. Uh, uh, it was a, a scandalous day in Westminster, one of many. And just the other th uh, uh, on the amendments, I'm quite disappointed. And uh, I, I sense a trend here where the UUP seems to be falling into their old habits of trying to send uh, in, but it won't work. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Green. Thank you for that. Councillor Warrington. Thank you, Chair, uh, for letting me in. Uh, I'll start by saying we are somewhat uh, disappointed that uh, you wouldn't allow our amendment, but uh, we respect that decision that you've taken. Um, we all recognise the hard work of the health workers right across the spectrum, and we are somewhat surprised that in 
the DUP's uh, original uh, per motion, proposal that they didn't mention care workers in, in their in their motion. Uh, they obviously have been a very important part as well to all this. Um, I have spoken to the minister directly, and I uh, received confirmation that several months ago he asked his officials to draw up a range of options on payments, and hopefully he'll be able to make a positive announcement uh, to all the nursing staff uh, sooner rather than later. I think it's important that we remember we're still in the middle of this pandemic, and you know all the, the health workers do deserve um, a, a significant uh, increase in their pay, but let's basically get this pandemic out of the road force, please. Uh, we, we basically, unfortunately, we have seen a bit of a race to the bottom with our militant left wing members pretending that resources are infinite and attempting to outdo do each other with the size of their amendment. But it is not the responsible way that we are doing business in this chamber. This serious issue requires sensible and measured proposals. But as per usual, some of us are more interested in grabbing the headlines uh, than actually uh, than actually trying to drive change. And it's basically as they clamour over each other in a disgusting attempt uh, to, uh, to look for another picture in the paper or whatever. So let's try and remember that we have a responsibility as a council uh, to act responsibly and not in our own self-interest. Now, we uh, we will basically, uh, reluctantly, we will be supporting uh, the DUP motion tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Warrington. And Councillor Bernice Swift. Garamagad, Kiherlock. And yeah, just uh, very quickly as well, a few points just to make. Um, I am disappointed with, I suppose, the ruling tonight, uh, the amended motion by Siobhan Curry was definitely the one I was going to be supporting uh, because I feel strongly it has covered everything, particularly as well as Victor's after mentioning the care workers who undoubtedly make a significant contribution. But that's not to uh, obviously say about the heroic contribution that's made by everybody that's working within the NHS under very difficult, constraining times. And we know that they're all exhausted, so they have to be commended. I am disappointed in the DUP motion as I feel strongly the £500 is a paltry response and it really is, uh, you know, while the hand clapping at the very start was us all out showing support, it was good, but even that didn't go uh, long enough or far enough uh, for all of the people who are working so hard and genuinely in such difficult circumstances in this pandemic. So to put a price on what all of these workers are doing is just not good enough either. I feel very strongly about how I wish to genuinely express my total gratitude and fully support uh, any trade union demands uh, with the immediate pay raises that were discussed years ago now, it can be said, of which the DUP uh, laughed out of Westminster, which I found totally shameful and shambolic. And indeed, it goes just down to the crux of the Tory cuts, which have been supported by the DUP and largely upheld at Stormont, will never be tolerated by me. Um, and while I accept Councillor Erskine has explained in her narrative, she did not wish to get the thank you payment mixed up with the pay rise. While I understand that, as others have said, it would have been better for me if that had been actually clearly stated um, within the motion. Um, but again, um, failing to mention um, uh, uh, all of the workers is neglectful. So I won't and can't be supporting uh, it as it is. Uh, I'd like to hear some other changes and amendments, and then I'll make my decision. But it is unfortunate that the other one was ruled out. Uh, Gormaga, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor Swift. Councillor Baird. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to Councillor Coffey's uh, motion, I, I'm not sure if I heard him correctly. So, um, um, in the um, so we haven't, Councillor Baird, we haven't considered Councillor Coffey's amendment yet. We're, we're, we've had the motion and we're considering the amendment by Councillor Gannon. 
Okay, then. Thank you, Chair. Apologies for coming. Okay. I just wanted okay. a bit of clarification. Yeah. I'll come in again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Chris McCaffrey, please. Gormogan, just a, a quick comment. I'm equally disappointed that uh, Councillor Curry's motion was not allowed in tonight, and I felt it was the one that was the most comprehensive. It covered uh, all of the gaps, and unfortunately, the other motions are lacking. But I would just point out one very quick point uh, on Amendment 4, which I appreciate you did not allow, but um, proposed by Councillor Warrington and seconded by Councillor Smith. Um, you know, I, I would be remiss of me not to point out that there was a, an error in that amendment. Um, I'll just read it here very quickly that the Minister mm -hmm. has indicated that he is seeking to making an additional payment to carers. Yeah, well, I know, I, I, I know it's that, not, I know it really isn't relevant since we're not dealing with it. Um, we have to grammar and punctuation, so I just felt that point Thank out. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. You. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor McAleer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I was actually coming in to speak on the amendment by Councillor Coffey, but I would, if we're if we're going to be doing that afterwards, I'll maybe hold on. But I would just make one point um, that I feel really does need to be raised at this juncture, um, and that's uh, the the militant left position, as described earlier, uh, rather laughably, really, is the position that's been stated by the trade unions representing our healthcare workers. And if you consider that to be militant left after all the fine words that I've heard this evening of people who are happy to support and fallen over themselves to support, yet seemingly can't do that when they're in government, uh, I think that reflects more on you than it does on the proposer of the amendment. So I would urge everyone to support the amendment proposed by Councillor Coffey and seconded by myself, which goes uh, we haven't the heard that. Councillor, we have Councillor, we haven't heard that yet. So at this stage we're we are going to when 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 our speakers have spoken, we'll go to vote on the amendment from Councillor Gannon. And okay, if that well, falls I, and if that falls then we will consider the next amendment. Well I just in in light of that, I would just or people who that it's the trade unions who have actually considered and who Councillor Coffey has referenced explicitly in his motion. So we would urge people to be mindful of that when they're voting on the original motion and subsequent amendments. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Chris Smith, I think this is the final speaker at this point. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. I suppose um, two issues I, I want to raise. Um, one is in relation to the earlier ta uh, earlier comment by um, Councillor McAleer around the, the militant left. And secondly, um, just in, 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 a, in a wider point, I'm, I'm reading here from the militant left Wikipedia page. The group has one public representative who is named, who has been elected to Fermanagh Noble District Council um, as a cross-community Labour alternative member but left the joint CWI that this year. So I think that's probably a fair reflection um, um, of, of, of what that is. If that's not accurate, I would suggest that that member takes that up with that group. Um, secondly, just I, I think it is important to note that while um, a, lot of, a lot of comments have been made around um, the DUP and how they, um, how they, they broke parity, um, that position was maintained by subsequent health ministers, um, indeed from subsequent health ministers of the party that is then attacking um, the, the aforementioned party for um, breaking that party. So difficult, difficult to um, difficult to, to square that circle, in my opinion. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor McCaffrey, you've been you've already spoken. So we're going to put uh, this amendment by Councillor um, Gannon and seconded by Councillor Phillips. Yeah, we're going to put that to a vote. Um, all those in favour, can you indicate, please, by raising your hands? Sorry, Chair, can I just ask one question in relation to the order that the amendments are being raised as opposed to the order that they're actually listed in the attachment? In relation to tonight's, because I, I just took them. I took them in the order Gannon. that they that the speakers were there. The speakers were there indicating. Councillor Gannon was the first speaker to indicate to speak. Despite it being noted as amendment two in the attachment, and I, like I don't that, know that when really doesn't matter. No, it's well, well, that could be interpreted that the speaker in amendment one was not going to speak on it. So I just took it as Councillor Gannon was there ready to speak. 
I would imagine that would be up to the speaker, but I just wanted to get clarification on, on why that was. That's up to the chair. Thank okay. you. That is that's with the chair. Thank you. Um, I've asked for hands in indication of support of Amendment 2. Just we'll do a count. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Dehan has declared an interest. We're just going to do a double check here if all members 18, right? Just if if we could say all hands now remain up, please, and no further hands. If all decisions have been made, we're going to count uh, the hands in support of the amended motion. By Councillor Cannon. A point of order, Chair. Maybe a roll call would be more appropriate because hands are kind of going up and down as, as we're. Right, as right. We're we, just... Thank you. Maybe we will do that in this instance. Thank you. So, this is the amendment by Councillor Gannon. Um, so, those in favour are those against. Um, so, I start the roll call. Um, Against. Councillor Baird. Against. Councillor Blake. For. Councillor Buchanan. Abstain. Councillor Glenn Campbell. Evaver. For. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor John Coyle. For. Councillor Curry. Evaver. For. Councillor Dehan. Abstain. Or, yes, declared an interest there. Councillor Anne Marie Donnelly. Four. Councillor Sean Donnelly. Four. Councillor Stephen Donnelly. As apologies. Um, Councillor Keith Elliott. Chair, he's had to leave the meeting early. Apologies. Okay, that's okay. Thank you. Councillor Erskine. Abstain. Abstain, is that? Yes. Could, could you repeat, Councillor Erskine, please? Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Feely? For. Councillor Fitzgerald? Apology. Councillor Gannon? For. Councillor Garrity? For, Chair. Councillor Green? For. Councillor Irvine is not here. Councillor Keenan? Not here either. Um, Councillor Catherine Kelly? For. Councillor Padrigan Kelly? Four. Councillor Maguire. If ever, four. Councillor McAleer. Against. Councillor McCaffrey. In Lassu, four. Councillor McCann. Four. Councillor McLaughry. Against. Councillor McElduff. If ever, four. Councillor McPhillips. Four, Chair. Councillor O'Coffey. Against. Councillor O'Reilly. Four. Councillor Rainey. Against. Councillor Robinson. I'm staying. Councillor Smith. Against. Can you repeat that, please? Against. Thank you. Councillor Swift. Four. Councillor Thompson. Abstain. Councillor Thornton. Against. Councillor Warrington. Against. And Councillor Wilson. Against. Thank you. Thank you. Just do count Thank you, members. Yes, that um, vote 
for for the amendment is 20 um, against 10 to uh, five, five abstentions and so that amendment is carried and becomes a substantive motion and now um, we can hear the the amendment from um, Councillor Coffey. Thank you. It's against that motion. Thank you. Yeah, well, I've uh, I have I've actually spoken already, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I think that it's uh, the main point I want to say is that uh, the position I have enunciated clearly is the the minimum that would address the demands as set out and agreed democratically by all the healthcare trade unions uh, at present in the UK as a whole, and that uh, I think that we as a council should explicitly come down on the side of the workers in that uh, demand. That's that's as simple as this. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Coffey. Um, have we any responses to that um, to that proposal, to that amendment? Councillor Baird? Yes, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Pardon me. If we just go back to Councillor Coffey's initial uh, introduction to what he was going to say, if I heard him right, I think he said he was speaking on behalf of the trade union movement, and I think that's the wording. So in response to that, I must admit, I thought he was elected as a councillor for Enniskillen uh, DEA to serve him from Ananoma Council, although having listened to him last night, I see he's taken an interest in Oma as well. But I suppose the question I have to ask is, uh, is there a conflict of interest there uh, in uh, his presentation? Thank you. Um, okay. Just pa pass to the chief executive. Is there? Well, well, no, Chair, I'm sorry, it's not something for officers to rule. It's always no. up to members no. to determine in respect of conflicts perceived or otherwise. Okay, it's, it's yeah, up to the member himself. Yes, and the member, yes, himself to to Chair, can um, I come out just that line? address that issue because uh, there's a few things being said here. Uh, the, the first is that, uh, yes, I'm a supporter of militant left and yes, I'm a cross-community Labour alternative councillor uh, to address that issue. Secondly, uh, to address the issue of um, what Councillor Baird has just said, I, I literally wrote my entire speech and contribution down so I can just reread what I wrote, which was uh, as a cross-community Labour representative, which is what I am, cross-community Labour alternative. I represent uh, my politics is that of the the trade union movement as a whole, uh, the labour movement, and I don't see any contradiction in that. Uh, that's what I'm elected to do, so I don't see any problem. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Coffey. Councillor McAleer, you're responding to the amendment. Yes, sure. And, um, yeah, thanks for, for letting me in there. Yeah, I'm happy to second this proposal from Councillor, this motion from Councillor Coffey, and I think as has been stated and as noted in the in the proposal itself, it's what the trade unions, the healthcare trade unions, are seeking themselves. So I think those uh, members of parties uh, should be very mindful of that. I know that a lot has been said uh, in relation to what was going on locally a year ago, um, and I know many people took the time to go out and stand alongside the healthcare workers who were taking industrial action and forced to take quite historical industrial action which really showed the the strength of the trade union movement i suppose despite or in spite of the the best attempts by the tories is still uh, alive and kicking and still a force to be reckoned with and um, what i would also say is just that being mindful of our geographical location and given the fact that news has gone out just this evening that the SWA is uh, not actually admitting visitors at present to the Enniskillen Hospital uh, due to the actual uh, pandemic that's going on and the risk of, of COVID and the fact that we have been, I suppose, led into this by, I would say, incompetent government, if not worse. Um, and that goes for both the Westminster government and the shambolic uh, rule that we have on Stormont or lack of leadership that we have coming from Stormont. I would hope that the the recent drop in in figures in relation to this disease is, is one that's going to continue and I would urge anyone listening and all our residents of our district and yeah. beyond okay. to follow the health advice. But I, I think there's nothing 
contentious or controversial in the motion that's brought before you. And I think it's a very real way of showing your support for the healthcare workers for all that they have done. And indeed, for really showing that there's more than just words coming out of this chamber, that we can take actions for it and progress the demands of the trade union and of the healthcare workers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McAleer. And just invite Councillor McAlduff to speak. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. I'll be very brief. Um, I think it's my understanding that the RCN, the Royal College of Nursing, are advocating a 12.5% pay raise. That's my understanding. Secondly, be assured of Sinn Féin's support for our health workers. And uh, just to elaborate upon Councillor Anne-Marie Fitzgerald's apology this evening, Councillor Anne-Marie Fitzgerald is a frontline paramedic on duty this evening. And we salute Councillor Anne-Marie Fitzgerald and her colleagues in ambulance service and throughout the wider health service at this time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McAlduff. We do indeed. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gannon. Thank you, Chair, just to, to speak on this um, amendment here. Um, the amendment does uh, uh, that, that kind of inaccuracy in figures that Councillor McElduff has just raised uh, it, is, it was something that was bearing on my mind, uh, where it's 15% in the motion and 12.5% in the uh, by the RCN. And even that, that £3,000 figure that's quoted, I believe Unison are looking for a £2,000 pay up raise. So it seems that different, obviously different unions have different positions. And I feel that the figures, there may be issues with the figures, maybe Councillor Rakofi can clarify that particular uh, aspect of it. But we've been caught with our pants down, for lack of a better phrase, on sending away a motion with figures that were incorrect before. Um, so we, we shouldn't have that again. Um, I think, and I think as well, putting a number on it at this uh, is incorrect. What if the unions turn around tomorrow and say they want 20%? What if they say they want six thousand pound? Obviously, we, uh, us ourselves, and the SDLP fully support the trade unions, as do other parties here tonight. But we'd be behind them because we put a figure on it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Councillor Curry. You're next. Thank you. Yes, Gormaga Chair. Yes, um, and and just on a similar vein, and it was contained in my amendment, and and that's why I did feel it was better. Um, but we said that, um, uh, along with other parts that we had added, the best way to value health and social care workers is through a fully funded, fair and decent pay award negotiated through their health rate unions. Um, and that's just an excerpt. And that's because our party speaks to the trade unions um, and we know that there is a difference of opinion um, and there are different asks from the different trade unions. So it is not our place here in this council to be uh, setting a figure on that. That is for the workers and that's for their trade union to negotiate that to a settlement that they are happy with. That's what I have to say. Grimaud. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Curry. So there are no other speakers on this at present. So um, I'm going to go for a roll call and for a vote. Yeah, of Chair, can I just come back on just the accuracy issue there because I can clarify exactly what the, as I've been very careful to state throughout, the position that as enunciated there is the minimum to satisfy all four health trade unions. Now, two of whom have the position that's in there and two of them have a position slightly lower. So I would like to see the higher of the, 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 the four positions. And I think that this council should want to see the higher of the four positions okay. and I, I want us to back that that's why i'm for okay thank you. you've clarified thank you um so the amendment is in front of us now so i'd um we'll go to a vote on this if just do a roll call again this is councillor coffee's seconded by councillor mcaleer um so those um, in favour or against, you can vote now. So, um, myself against. Councillor Baird? Against. Councillor Blake? Against. Councillor Buchanan? Against. Councillor Glenn Campbell? Abstain. Councillor Clark? Abstain. Councillor Coyle? Against. Councillor Curry? I'm abstaining. 
Uh, Councillor Dehan has a declaration of interest. Councillor Amory Donnelly. Abstain. Councillor Sean Donnelly. Abstain. Stephen Donnelly is not here. Um, Councillor Keith Elliott has left. Councillor Erskine. Against. Councillor Feely. Abstain. Um, Councillor Amory Fitzgerald is not here. Councillor Gannon. Against. Councillor Garrity. Against, Chair. Councillor Green. Councillor Green? Yeah. Against. Councillor Sorry, Irvine? sorry, abstain. Abstain, sorry. Okay, abstain. Councillor Irvine is not here. Councillor Keenan? Not here. Councillor Catherine Kelly? Abstain. Councillor Patrick Ian Kelly? Abstain. Councillor Tommy McGuire? Uh, Tommy McStain, abstain. Councillor McAleer? For pay party. Councillor McCaffrey? I am on, on round. I abstain. Councillor McCann? Abstain. Councillor McLaughry? Against. Councillor McElduff? Tommy Astainu, abstain. Councillor McPhillips? Against. Councillor O'Coffey? Four. Councillor O'Reilly? Abstain. Councillor Rainey? Against. And Councillor Robinson? Against. Councillor Smith? Against. Councillor Swift. For. Councillor Thompson. Against. Councillor Thornton. Against. Councillor Warrington. Against. And Councillor Wilson. Against. Thank you. And just give me a few moments. We're going to top this up. So we have three, four, we have 17 against and 14 abstentions. So the amendment falls. So Council, Councillor Gannon's motion um, as amended is the motion that is carried. And at this point, I invite Councillor, Councillor Erskine, if you'd like to make some remarks. Uh, point of order, just the chair, just. Okay, yes. But which point of uh, order is this? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's to ask the Chief Executive to explain something uh, in around what we're after doing there because I'm a wee bit confused. If Bencher Gannon's amendment was, was uh, agreed, and then we voted then on Councillor uh, O'Coffey's amendment, how would Councillor O'Coffey's amendment then have been uh, added in the Councillor Gannon's amendment. I'm confused around that. That it, it seems it seems extraordinarily confusing. How would that have worked, Chair? I, I'm assuming that it would um, relate to the latter two sentences, or sorry, two lines. So where Councillor uh, the, the change between the two was uh, Councillor Gannon refers to the Northern Ireland Executive. Whereas the uh, Councillor O'Coffey amendment relates to the Health Minister, which is in the original motion, and then the difference relates to the 15% permanent pay uplift across all grades of £3,000. So that would have been the matter of difference between the two. So, so, so which would we have went with seeing both was passed? No, no. The, the only amendment which has been carried has been the Councillor. Gannon's amendment, that is this. But I'm, I'm saying that Councillor uh, O'Coffey's amendment had have been passed as well. How would the two of them have uh, 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 been added to uh, Councillor Erskine's uh, original? No, no, Chair. What the, the proceeding would be that whichever amendment is voted on successfully, which in this case was Councillor Gannon's, becomes the substantive motion. And that then would be voted on. So the amendment in relation to Councillor O'Coffey was taken in relation to Councillor Gannon's substantive motion. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for that, Chief Executive. So I'm returning to the original proposer of the motion, and it has been amended um, to Councillor Erskine. If you'd like to say a few words, please. Thank you, Chair. I think that was about an hour there, so I appreciate you steering us through that, Chair. Um, look, I just want to say that at the outset, I suppose I'm disappointed in the way that some parties have handled this motion tonight. I'm disappointed because tonight our hospitals are overwhelmed, our staff our our doctors, our nurses, our care workers, um, you know, those on the front line are facing some very difficult decisions tonight and some very difficult situations. And instead, we spent quite a lot of time party pol politicking uh, politics and everything. I know that that's what we're about, but I could sit here and go on and list the many different times that ministers didn't vote for or put through pay or they brought down the assembly and didn't allow for pay increases. I'm not going to do that tonight. I want to thank Councillor Gannon for Sorry. his amendment. And this again? This we, no we obviously um, abstained from that. Um, and But I want to thank um, Adam for um, his motion and for the contributions that have been made um, by him and um, his party tonight. Um, there was a point just in relation to £500 and, and why um, that was the, the figure. The reason why I brought forward £500, and I know that that's not enough to show our recognition to those staff. The reason why is because other administrations have also done that, and I felt that was to give some um, equality, I suppose, between the different um, devolved administrations that have done that already. Um, that we could show that we have done that um, as well. Um, so that's why £500 was that figure. So, um, Chair, thank you for um, steering us through that tonight. Um, and I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you to take Stephen McCann. Apologies. Um, thank you, Councillor Erskine, for for that. Um, your your comments on the motion there. Um, I have Stephen, uh, Councillor McCann, wishing to speak. Would you like to say something? Yes, thank you, Chair. Briefly, uh, Chair, it's just around the procedural way that this has been uh, this is run through. And I apologise in advance if I've got this uh, mixed up or incorrect. The last vote that we took part in was to vote on Councillor Coffey's amendment. Am I correct? That's correct, yes. So we now have a situation where Councillor Councillor Erskine has summed up on our motion, but we actually haven't voted on the motion itself as amended. We have accepted it with the vote. We've accepted the original motion and the amendment of it goes with it. I understand I, I and hopefully Philip might be in here, but you know, I'm trying to follow what's been happening and to be honest, I'm struggling. I would have thought that you know uh, an amendment is voted on, and then you would vote on a substantive motion as amended, and then you know obviously the proposal of some amendment up. becomes a substantive motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Confused, I have to say, but I'll, I'll take okay. uh, take your on, chair. Thank you, thank you, Councillor McCann. Okay, so that deals with uh, the motion at thirteen point two. Um, we're moving now to um, a motion which has been uh, proposed by Councillor Green and seconded by Councillor Campbell. Um, once again, um, there is an amendment proposed by Councillor Warrington, let me see Councillor Warrington and Councillor Smith, but I'm ruling that um, I'm not taking that amendment because again, substantively, it um, changes. It's not, it's not an amendment, it's a complete um, rewrite. So I'm just going to hear the um, motion from Councillor Green, if you'd like to go ahead and read the motion and then I'll give you five minutes. Councillor Green, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
This council condemns the British Secretary of State's failure to order a full public inquiry into the assassination of Pat Finucane. This council believes that it is now time for the Finucane family to be told all the facts behind the assassination of their beloved husband and father and calls on the British government to immediately order a full public inquiry. This council believes that the Finucane family should be told the truth of the extent of the collusion in Pat's assassination and the cover and the cover up that followed. Uh, further to this, this council calls on the British government to immediately order a full public inquiry. This council demands any public inquiry must be truly meaningful and not restricted under the terms of the Inquiries Act 2005. Judge Curry uh, criticised as being a meaningful inquiry which makes a meaningful inquiry impossible. The failure to order a full public inquiry is no longer simply about one man but rather it is about the wider issue of truth and justice. This council now calls on the British government to fully implement the Stormont House Agreement legacy mechanism uh, so as everyone who has lost a loved one can receive the truth. Okay. Thank you. Um, just now to uh, summarise, uh, Pat Finucan was one of the most high profile human rights lawyers in Ireland. The killing was national and international news. And for the last 31 years, the pursuit of the truth about who killed Pat and why has been national and international news as well. Uh, the Finucan family has been an inspiration to many who seek justice. Uh, they have been they have not been and will not be silenced. Their questions around British collusion deserves answers. Uh, their questions will not go away. The British government has an obligation to ensure that the truth is told. Now is the time you add the voice of Fermanagh and Oma District Council to the widespread national and international support for the new for the Finucan case and to call for a full public independent inquiry into the killing that uh, shockwaves uh, that sent shockwaves around not only this country but beyond for the last 31 years uh, it leaves people and uh, people has been left in utter disbelief that the British government continues to block uh, the truth about his mother and of many hundreds more in its sacred dirty war in the north of Ireland. And this motion to the council. Thank you, Councillor Green. And um, Councillor Campbell, you'd like to second that motion? You can start now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, well, sadly, Chair, the British government's denial of justice to the Finucan family uh, is not a unique occurrence. Many families in Ireland, indeed many families here in our district, are, are, are all too familiar with their approach. The extent of Britain's dirty war in Ireland uh, is indeed extensive uh, and it does merit international scrutiny. The family of Pat Finucan absolutely deserve a full public inquiry. And there are those who willingly join the British government uh, in a state of denial uh, to this day that collusion uh, never existed. But that will not deter families such as the Finucans from, from seeking the truth, nor should it deter this council from supporting them. And nor does that state chair of denial in relation to conclusion explain away the continuous attempts by the British government to deny, to frustrate, distract, do everything in their power to resist truth and justice. If collusion was not a policy that was sanctioned at the highest level of the British government, why then has successive British governments denied truth and justice to so many? In conclusion, Chair, I'm proud to second this motion and I extend my support uh, to the family of Pat Finucane and to all families seeking truth and justice at this time. Finally, Chair, I would appeal for unity in this chamber in support of this motion and in support and solidarity with the family of Pat Finucane. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. That's seconded. Um, now to the floor, Councillor Smith. 
Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, I suppose, uh, I'll start by saying, look, as with the previous motion, um, disappointed that you don't accept the amendment. But I know more than most um, how difficult it can be to sit in that chair, and I accept the judgment without, without criticism or, or, or challenge. I think it's really important to start uh, this speech, which I make on behalf of my party, with a clear and unambiguous statement. What happened to the Philippine family was wrong and it deserves justice. It was an illegal killing which left an empty chair at the dinner table and broken hearts in its weight and its wake. Um, it is my sincerest wish that those responsible are brought to justice. Um, as with all murders uh, carried out during the terrorist campaign from whatever quarter, we simply cannot pick and choose those which we can condemn. Um, there should be no hierarchy of victims. And when I was 18, I actually received a bursary from Edgar Graham's widow Anne. He was also a prominent lawyer and a, union, uh, and a unionist politician and, and murdered by Republican terrorists. And his murder has not been given the same treatment as that of Pat Finucane. In fact, uh, Sinn Féin's MP for North Belfast, the son of Mr. Finucane, um, when he was on radio, uh, couldn't bring himself to condemn that murder. Um, and I think the hypocrisy of some who are selecting a hierarchy of victims um, is, is not a good way to go forward and, and, and is is not helpful. Chair, this motion isn't about one man, it's about the people who were blown to bits in the skeleton, it's about uh, um, which a former chair of Sinn Féin couldn't condemn, it's about those killed at King's Mills, um, um, it's about Anne Travers, the member of this council marked when she was undergoing tra uh, cancer treatment, it's about the Oma bomb victims who we've all let down so badly recently. The Ulster Unionist Party believed that one system for all victims, be it in the relatives of those killed in the Oma bomb or in the skeleton, or the MP for North Belfast, um, or out of the North, North East Grand Belfast. That's the only way that we can move forward, and for the avoidance of doubt, that cannot be the system laid out uh, in the Stormont House Agreement. Look, I, I, I will always find it difficult um, that apologists for the IRA, who were res responsible for approximately 65% of all deaths and the troubles, um, and those who have behaved um, so dishonorably towards um, some victims in the past, have a, have a brass neck to try and lecture others the morals of the troubles and i would therefore issue every member and every party uh that's represented in this chamber a challenge let's commit to a single system which is the capacity to provide for all victims of the troubles rather than this, this hierarchy of victims um with people like pat finnick and place at the top uh, and other victims of the trouble um conveniently uh, and, and really rather unforgiving forgivingly um 15 seconds Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Smith. And Councillor Garrity. Thank you very much, Chair. And uh, at this stage, I'd like to make a few words on the motion that has been presented to us this evening here. Um, the Pat Finucan murder was one of the most controversial and notorious of the troubles, um, not only because of the manner in which he was murdered, where he was gunned down in front of his family in his home, in front of his wife and three children, but also because of the evidence of collusion that existed and the lack of evidence into an investigation. Now, Chair, that's not my opinion. That is the opinion of the respected judges and lawyers. The UK Supreme Court said the murder investigation was inadequate. The Stevens inquiries found evidence of collusion between security forces and the murder. The De Silva report confirmed evidence of collusion and state agent involvement in the murder. Brandon Lewis, the Secretary of State himself, when announcing that the inquiry would not proceed, said the levels of collusion were totally unacceptable. And indeed, in all our views, collusion is unacceptable. State agents, Chair, are state employees, and it's their job to protect and help the people. And that's what we all hope and strive for. The British government is responsible for the actions of its agent, but there seems to be the lack of the want for an inquiry as it will expose the levels and the extent of collusion in the Pat Finucan murder. I would argue, Chair, that if there's nothing to hide, there's nothing to fear. It is therefore the position of the SCLP here in Fermanagh Oma District Council that the Finucan family in their search for truth their right for justice and their demand for an inquiry. We support this motion. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garrity. Councillor Errol Thompson. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. 
Go the ahead. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. The, the, the murder of Pat Finucane, like all murders in the Troubles, was wrong. And as a party, we condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Unlike thousands of others, however, the Finucane family know who the perpetrator was. The case has been investigated. The case has seen court appearances. The case has seen convictions. The case has been offered an inquiry, which the family have refused. Thousands of other families have seen none of this happen. In many cases, they have seen little or nothing by way of action to bring them either truth or justice. The Supreme Court did not order that a public inquiry must be held. The type of inquiry available to all families is the same type offered to the Finucan family. It's notable that this motion doesn't use the word equality because what has been asked for in this motion isn't equality. It's a singling out of a specific case for special treatment. The motion talks about everyone receiving the truth. That may carry some weight if the party tabling the motion was prepared to tell the truth about what happened in Northern Ireland over the decades of the Troubles and in recent times. Madam Chairperson, we are against the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Councillor Swift. Yeah, Garmagan, I will be in full support of the motion. I have actively campaigned alongside Geraldine Fanuk and Michael and John for years, uh, seeking a public inquiry for the murder uh, of Pat Fanuk. And I have been proactive and played a pivotal role in many of the campaigns in seeking truth and justice, uh, particularly about collusion. And we know from all of the work and research that has already been done um, and carried out, uh, particularly about the murder of Pat Finucan and along with all other murders that took place and mention has already been made of throughout the, our own council area. But regarding collusion, which was British state sponsored murder and as stated by Sir John Stevens, the unlawful involvement of agents in murder implies that the security forces sanctioned the killings and that has not been properly evidenced. The murder of citizens through collusion with the Unionist death squads in that case was definitely a British state policy in Ireland and it was controlled and resourced and directed all by British state agencies. Um, there has been a, a serious web of deceit. There has been denial, concealment and cover up. And indeed, of course, the media plays a role in creating, as has already been mentioned, a hierarchy of victim and I, uh, victimhood. And as I said uh, the other night as well, the seeds of elitism were already sown many years ago in the Bloomfield report uh, about that. And unfortunately, victims of state violence felt um, second best which isn't good enough. Collusion was a British state policy. There has been an official cover up. The collusion has been part of the six county states since its creation and collusion has not ended. It's ongoing. And the British apparatus, which operates the policy of collusion can, continues in existence today. And the human rights abusers are still in existence today in an awful lot of those agencies. So it is imperative, no storm and house uh, historical investigation unit or any of the uh, pillars that have been set up to obtain information will delve into the breaches of rules of law and the pursuit of justice and truth that is required in the Pat Finucane case. So I fully support all of that. But I do want to reiterate about the legal requirements on, with the human rights under Articles 2. Uh, two and three indeed, um, there exists a positive obligation on the part of the state and sovereign governments to protect life whenever and wherever it is or may be at risk. And that was the case in Pat Finucane's, in Pat Finucane's uh, life. He was threatened and indeed, um, yeah. Um, so fully support the campaign and all campaigns for all victims in their pursuit for truth and justice. Very much. Thank you, Councillor Swift. Um, now I invite Councillor Bart Wilson. I, as uh, others have done as well, I, uh, the, the murder of uh, Pat Finucane, he was very important to, I'm quite sure, but 
when we look at how many other families are in a similar position, uh, like the widow of Jean McConville, they talk about uh, cruelty, uh, dragged out from her 10 or 11 children, murdered by her Ian buried, never even got a decent funeral, uh, buried somewhere where she'd never been seen. Uh, and who killed or who was killed the uh, superintendent Harry Breen and superintendent Robert Buchanan? Chief uh, uh, Judge uh, Spathwick said he was satisfied that there was collusion in these murders. He was satisfied that the evidence points to someone in the Guardi station assisting the IRA. At his party conference in 1988, the SDLP leader, the late John Hume, told delegates, if I were to lead a civil rights campaign in Northern Ireland today, the major target of that campaign would have to be provisional IRA. Up until last Saturday, 2,705 people have died in the 20 years prior uh, and up to the present troubles. 31% were members of the security forces, 14% were, mem were members of the paramilitaries, uh, 55 were ordinary civilians, men and women from all sections of the community, 69% were from the Catholic community and 31 from the Protestant community. Statistics are devastating as to who killed them. 62% were killed by provisional IRA and their fellow Republican terrorists, 27 by loyalists, 10% by the British Army, 2% by the RUC and not 028 by the Ulster Defence Regiment. In short, people describing themselves as Irish Republicans have killed six times as many human beings as the British Army, 30 times as many as the RUC and 250 times as many as the Ulster Defence Regiment. These aren't my words, these are John Hume's words. And uh, I believe, what about the Castle Day graveyard? There's somewhere around 30 young men there who to supplement their wages on a farm and whatever. Uh, some of the uh, UDR or police reserve, there's uh, somewhere around 30 of them buried in that graveyard. What, uh, did they have any uh, inquiries? No, they never had it, forgotten about. And I must have broken or anyone else should not fall into a category of a hierarchy of victims. It's totally fair to all the other victims that have not received any such investigations and uh, I will not be supporting the uh, thank motion. You. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Baird. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Sinn Féin and their various fellow travellers in the Irish Republican movement continually tell us that there can be no hierarchy of victims. Now, during what they refer euphemistically as the conflict, but what in reality was a sectarian campaign, more than three and a half thousand people were killed. Now, Bert has given the figures there. I'm not going to repeat them. But apart from the, the three and a half thousand plus killed, there have been tens of thousands injured, and they're never mentioned. Now, those are very interesting figures and need to be taken into account. And, and if there's going to be finger pointing, think, point the finger where the uh, perpetrators lie. Now, while, while I co condemn the killing of Pat Finucane, I fail to understand why this death has a higher profile or hierarchical position than any other. And indeed, I find it hypocritical for people who can't condemn the Enniskillen bomb or all the Republican terrorist activity, or any terrorist activity, in fact, to bring this motion forward. Now, I do understand that, that it is part of uh, uh, Irish Republican revisionism and rewriting of history agenda, and that's really why it's being done. And I certainly, like my party, will not be supporting this motion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Baird. Councillor Coffey? Yeah, your your you, comments, Chair. thank, thank yeah. you. Um, the publication of the Corey report, uh, limited as it was, provided further evidence of the nefarious role played by the British state during the Troubles. Of course, it is not unique in doing so. The experience in most Western states, including the South, is that capitalist governments have been quite capable of resorting to undemocratic and ex extrajudicial measures when their position is threatened. I will be supporting this motion as I support the demand of all families to truth about what happened. I am also supportive of a proposal for a wider process to deal with the legacy of conflict. Genuine inquiries on this or any other atrocity must examine who directed operations, not just who pulled the triggers. It must involve the communities concerned, as well as representatives from the broad trade union movement capable of having an independent perspective. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coffey. And the final speaker I have indicating is Councillor Dehan. You may go ahead, um, Councillor Dehan. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, Chair, in the history of the Troubles, uh, the murder of Pat Finucane was one of the most heinous crimes. Uh, he was a lawyer, part of the legal system, going about his work in an honest manner. And uh, his killing uh, was shocking in its cruelty and inhumanity. The man was gunned down in front of his wife and children. The fact that there is evidence of state collusion in his death is truly shocking. One of the most important roles of the state is to protect its citizens. And therefore, any evidence of collu state collusion in a killing must be fully investigated and the truth must be fully uncovered. The only way I believe to achieve this is by a full public inquiry. The Fanukan uh, uh, family have been very dignified in, and brave and resolute in their insistence on this public inquiry. And I think that it is totally unacceptable and disgraceful that this has not been permitted thus far. Truth and justice is a necessary part of healing and reconciliation and restoring public confidence in our security forces and law enforcement agencies. I believe that the legacy of the Troubles must be addressed for each and every family of victims who have died in the conflict, of whom Pat Finucane is one. And for that reason, I will be supporting the motion, Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Dehan. And final, final speaker, Councillor McCloughy. Thank you, Chair. I wasn't going to speak on this motion, but I feel I have to. Um, the murder of Pat Finucane has to be condemned in, in, in any civilised society. Persons responsible should be brought before justice, as should all persons involved in that in criminal activity resulting in the death of another human being. However, with all the high publicity around Pat Finucane's murder, I must bring before the council the murder of a resident of this council. During March 1998, leading up to the 18th of March, was one of the worst weeks of the Troubles, with events throughout Northern Ireland which shocked and horrified all of us. During that time, a girl who I started off primary school with in Cash in 1970 and continued through until I went to a school in Enniskillen and she went to the Duke of Westminster. This girl was Gillian Johnson and when she was 21 years of age, her and her fiancé Stanley were sitting in a car on their yard after having gone to a chip shop when she was shot at 47 times. It was claimed that Stanley had been a member of the security forces. When this turned out to be not true, which was a blatant lie, they said her brother was a member of the security forces, which was another blatant lie. She had no connection with anybody. Her murder has been quietly ignored for years because of the events at that time. We've heard talk about Martin McGuinness being a member of the IRA and the famous green book that he abides by. Where in that green book can those persons who targeted and then instructed others to go and kill this girl be brought to answer? This is someone who is never mentioned and requires the same justice as Pat Finucane requires. We require a methodology to bring justice for all of the victims of terrorist and other crimes in Northern Ireland. And I include anybody by people acting outside of the law. We can't have a state. We have people talking about a shared Ireland and a new Ireland. Well, if the foundations of that Ireland are rotten, then it can never be built up. We cannot paper over and we cannot hide away the facts that cover that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McAleer. And 
This is the final speaker, Con I'm sorry, beg your pardon, Councillor McLaughlin. This is the final speaker, Councillor McAleer. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate you for letting me in. Like the yeah. last speaker, I wasn't going to speak, but I think it's important that I do. I think there's a couple of points to note here. There's, I think every speaker that has, has been before me this evening has mentioned that they are in favour of justice for victims of the troubles. And I think they can demonstrate that by voting in favour of this motion. Pat Finucane was a human rights solicitor. He was murdered in his home in front of his family. Coming up now, just coming up, I believe, to his 32nd anniversary of his shooting, which was, I think, three weeks after there had been reference made to the practices or sympathies or perceived sympathies uh, by a senior politician in the House of Commons. And I think the evidence that has proved beyond doubt that there is collusion in, or there was collusion in the murder of Pat Finucane has to be uh, investigated fully and independently, which it hasn't been done so far. And I think the respect the wishes of the family have to be respected in this instance, as with all other cases. So I will be voting in favour of the motion tonight. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor McAleer. Um, and I will return to the proposer for the concluding uh, remarks on the motion. So, Councillor Green, if you'd like to um, give your concluding remarks, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know where to start with some of the the responses there from uh, fellow councillors. Uh, Councillor Smith talked about apologists, but I'll not take any apologist, uh, uh, any uh, any guidance from an apologist of the British Empire, who who over the centuries has murdered tens of millions of people all over the world. So I don't think uh, I I'll be taking anything from him. Um, People, uh, and, and that includes starving ten, millions upon millions of people in the la uh, two centuries ago in Ireland and last century in India. So uh, uh, by the man that has voted the greatest ever, Brit Britain, Winston Churchill. But anyway, and uh, let's remember these same politicians, uh, uh, all uh, Nelson Mandela and George Washington and people like that, terrorists too. So, so Let's just uh, bear in mind when we talk about terrorists. Uh, and if we're talking about a state being built on a rotten foundation, surely the, the six counties is truly the state that was built on a rotten foundation. And the uh, Ulster Unionist Party that, that talked there uh, so long and, and emotionally about uh, truth and justice, they are the ones that's, that rule this, this part of Ireland. Uh, with her, an iron hand, uh, uh, my own local uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, said he wouldn't have one of us about the place. Uh, he lived a couple of miles from me. So all of that type of stuff, uh, I think these people should rem remember this when they're, when they're talking. Uh, 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 Ireland didn't start in 1916, and let's uh, not forget who mothered the first uh, RUC man, the first soldier. It, it, it wasn't nationalist or, or Republican when the thing started. And it, it's actually baffling that unionist parties don't want to hold the British government who are up to their necks in collusion to account. Because when, when there were modern nationalists and Republican people uh, back then freely, and uh, unionist people don't seem to, uh, or the unionist parties don't seem to worry about that, uh, who who's who's next on their hit list? Who next if they cause trouble to the turn their guns on in their uh, in their dirty little war? So uh, uh, the Pat Finucane case is is just one of hundreds and hundreds of cases, but it's the one that actually can uh, burst the dam uh, around the truth of just how high up this dirty war did go, and just who. At the very top of the British society, were getting uh, 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 loyalist paramilitaries and indeed their own army and okay, and five seconds to model, to model their own uh, citizens, as they called it. So, um, uh, I hope I hope people vote for the motion. Thank you. 
Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Councillor Green. Ten thousand children down in Chase. Uh, no, we can't have you interrupting, Councillor Wilson. Thank you. Um, so at that the concluding um, comments have been made there by the proposer. So we're going to put this uh, motion to a vote. Um, again, we'll do a roll call. Um, thank you. That's helpful. So. It's um, in support of the motion proposed by Councillor Green and Councillor Campbell. Um, Diana, can I seek a recorded vote, please? Thank certainly, you. that's not a problem. Thank you, Councillor Swift. We'll do a recorded vote. Um, so, um, Diana Armstrong against. Councillor Baird? Against. Councillor Blake? For. Councillor Buchanan? Against. Councillor Campbell? Evaver, for. Councillor Clark? For. Councillor Coyle? For. Councillor Curry? Evaber, for. Councillor Dehan? For. Councillor Amory Donnelly? For. Councillor Sean Donnelly? For. Councillor Stephen Donnelly is absent. Councillor Keith, Keith Elliott is absent. Councillor Erskine? Against. Councillor Feely? For. Councillor Amory Fitzgerald is absent. Councillor Gannon? For. Councillor Garrity? For, Chair. Councillor Green? Four. Councillor Irvine's absent. Councillor Keenan is absent. Councillor Catherine Kelly. Four. Councillor Patrick Ian Kelly. Evaver, four. Councillor McGuire. Evaver, four. Councillor McAleer. Four. Councillor McCaffrey. Aye, four. Councillor McCann. Four. Councillor McCloughery. Against. Thank you. Councillor McElduff. Evolver, four. Councillor McPhillips? Four. Councillor Coffey? Four. Councillor O'Reilly? Four. Councillor Rainey? Councillor Robinson? Against. Councillor Smith? Councillor, uh, could you repeat that, please? Against. Thank you. Councillor Swift? Four. Councillor Thompson? Against. Councillor Thornton. Against. Councillor Warrington. Against. And Councillor Wilson. Against. Thank you very much. Um, we'll just add those up there. Laptop's about to die. Let's do that there. Okay, thank you. Um, so that is 23 votes for and 12 against. So that motion is carried. Thank you for that, members. Um, now, just before we leave the motions, I've been reflecting on Councillor McCann's queries at the end of the previous motion. And just to avoid any ambiguity or confusion, I'm going to ask Philip if he has any uh, advice on this. Um, Philip, I'm content that Councillor Erskine summed up the proceedings and that members voted for Councillor Gannon's amendment. And if if you can have your views, please, on the substantive motion. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, indeed. Um, Councillor Gannon's amendment was voted on and Councillor Erskine uh, then summed up. She's allowed to close the debate in relation to the matter. Uh, we should then, just as a procedural matter, have gone ahead with a further vote. Uh, to confirm that members are happy to accept what, what had then become the substantive motion. Okay, well, and we can do that now if members, if members so wish, we can go ahead and do a further vote on this and accept that as a substantive motion. Can I clarify something from Philip when he is there? Sure, yes, Councillor Green. Uh, thanks. Uh, my point uh, that I asked uh, originally was we voted on on Councillor Gannon's amendment. And then we went on when it was passed, we went on to vote on uh, Councillor um, O'Coffey's amendment. If it also had been accepted, what then would the substantive motion have been? Um, to, uh, if it had been accepted, I would need to take a look just at, at, at the wording of the two motions to, to merge them together to confirm exactly what the substantive motion would have been at that place. Um, 
anything which had been approved and uh, which had been any of any part of the amendment that had been made by Councillor Gannon could not have been removed by the subsequent um, uh, amendment, but there could have been additions and removals to parts of the original motion. Um, I would need to sit and work out exactly what the wording would have been, but it, it didn't arise in any event. And, and just to clarify, then just one other point, and just because it was extremely confusing and if it happens uh, uh, on another night, uh, my thought would have been that we should have uh, uh, voted on on the first amendment first and then it moved on if it was defeated uh, as the substantive motion. And then if it had been defeated, we would have moved then on to the second amendment and voted on it, it, it as a substantive uh, uh, motion. Rather than try, if the, let's say there's three or four amendments and they're all voted through, surely the, the, there's no way that could end up as a, as a substantive mo motion where there was four amendments passed. There's no limit on the number of amendments which can be brought in relation to any motion. Um, and ultimately, following each amendment, you've got uh, each amendment that is successful and approved. You then have a new substantive motion, uh, which can be further amended in due course. Thank you. Thank you for that, Philip. Um, Councillor Coffey? Ah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm just, uh, I wanted to raise one thing when I have an opportunity to ask Philip. It, it, uh, I believe that the uh, some of the problem we're facing is really that we're not in a proper session and these things can't be uh, amended and uh, amended through uh, in, in physical format between us because we're simply not in the same room and so on. My understanding further is that we're supposed to consider each amendment singularly and that the substantive amendment coming forward then is subject to further amendments as and when they are brought forward. But my re question really is, uh, I believe my, my amendment was sub submitted before anyone else's and therefore it went first on the item of, of, of order business. So I'm wondering why it was de not dealt with in uh, order. And uh, I didn't push myself forward because I didn't feel the need because um, I, I, want, I, I was unsure exactly whether we were going to have a discussion on the existing motion or we would have a discussion on the amendment. But uh, before I managed even uh, speak the amendment had been put so I'm just wondering about the, whether that was the appropriate way to carry forward a meeting. Thank you Chair. Chair do you wish me to take that? Oh I beg your pardon. Um, really I took them in the order they appeared the speakers um, because um, I was confused. I didn't see Councillor Coffey's name and I thought well Councillor Gannon was there and I, I chose Councillor Gannon because he was he has an amendment and he was the first speaker to to indicate. Yeah, and sure. I, I mean that, that that's correct. The notices of motion appear in the agenda in the order in which they've been received. Um, amendments, the order in which amendments are taken, is is a matter for the discretion of the chair. But it is normally done on the basis of the um, order of the request to speak because there's no obligation on any party to move an amendment. Um, so if that party, you know, the chair would normally take uh, an amendment as they are raised from the floor on the night in question. Which Thank, is, you. Is Thank, you, Philip. Thank you for your clarification. Thank you. Councillor McCann. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, it's good to get an opportunity just to get this clarified because um, I was just going to go back and listen to that debate and see where it was left, you know, because I was conscious that we hadn't actually focused on the, on the motion as it was then after all amendments, you know, but I'm just querying, and come here, Chair, it's no reflection on the staff because I know how difficult it can be to, to chair a meeting without having to handle multiple amendments or multiple motions, so it is difficult. But I wonder where does this leave this motion now? Because without being to that, part, I think it's important that we get this right because in the past we have stopped councillors from speaking on motions once the proposal is summed up. So where does this sit now? Can we go back now and, and vote on the motion once the proposal has summed it up? Or are we going to create a precedent for future motions? Where to stand nor to stay in relation to summing up and go back and vote on the motion? You know, it's it's a real it's a real nurse nice chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Chair, just to clarify on that point, we we, we are still correct here in that the the, the closing the, the, the proposer of the original motion has a right to close the debate. Uh, and the vote is then taken after the proposal of the original motion has spoken. Uh, so in this case, Councillor Erskine has closed the debate 
Nobody else is now entitled to speak in relation to the matter, and we are entitled to take the vote. Okay, thank you for that, Philip. Thank you, members, for that. Um, and um, just we'll just. Oh yes, now we're going to um, proceed to the vote of the substantive motion, which is um, Councillor Gannon's amendment. Um, if we do a roll call again. Um, members all clear on that? Yep. We're going to go to uh, the substantive motion um, to accept it. A point of order, Chair. Can I request a uh, recorded vote? Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's a recorded vote. Um, right. Okay, so starting. Um, so, in support of Councillor Gannon's um, amended motion, uh, Councillor Armstrong against. Councillor Baird? Four. Councillor Blake? Four. Councillor Buchanan? Abstain. Councillor Campbell. Survivor, four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Coyle. Four. Councillor Curry. Survivor, four. Councillor Dehan. Garden in interest, Stay. Chair. Garden in interest. Councillor Amory Donnelly. Four. Councillor Steve Sean Donnelly. Four. Councillor Stephen Donnelly is absent. Councillor Keith Elliott absent. Councillor Erskine. Abstain, Chair. Councillor Feeling? Four. Councillor Fitzgerald is not here. Uh, Councillor Gannon? Four. Councillor Garrity? Four, Chair. Councillor Green? Four. Councillor Irvine is absent. Councillor Keenan is absent. Um, Councillor Catherine Kelly? Four. Councillor Patrick Ian Kelly? Four. Councillor Tommy McGuire? If I were four. Councillor McAleer? Four. Councillor McCaffrey? Aye, four. Councillor McCann? Four. Councillor McCloughrey? Four. Councillor McElduff? Evolver, four. Councillor McPhillips? Four. Councillor O'Coffey? Four. Councillor O'Reilly? Four. Councillor Rainey? Four. Councillor Robinson? Councillor Robinson? Yeah. Pardon, Councillor Robinson? Abstain. Abstain. Councillor Smith? Could you repeat, please? Sorry, internet. Against. Against. Councillor uh, Swift? Four. Councillor Thompson? Abstain. Councillor Thornton? Four. Councillor Warrington? Four. Councillor Wilson? Four. Thank you. That's, okay. That's quite clear. Okay, members, um, that motion, um, we have 28 for, two against, and four abstentions, so that substantive motion is carried. Thank you very much. Our members, on the agenda, we are on item 14, any other relevant business, um, and I have a request from Councillor Curry to speak, so can I invite you to speak, Councillor Curry? Thank you. Yes, Gurmil Moggett, Cairly, uh, and um, just before I speak on this, um, Chair, um, and just to address earlier, um, I I was very disappointed with your decision, but I respect uh, your position in the chair and that's your call. So just wanted to make that uh, clear. Thank um, you. Just uh, again, thank you for allowing me to come in, Chair. Uh, Sinn Féin MLAs, um, including local MLA Gemma Dolan, and I'm sure other parties uh, here, um, as well, recently met with Rachel Woods, Emily, and um, they met with her last week to discuss a private member's bill around paid leave for victims of domestic abuse, which she's tabling. And we as a party are very supportive, indeed, our own party leader, Mary Lou MacDonald, 
uh, TD along with Louise Rayleigh. TD are bringing a similar bill through the doll at, at this time. And I'm raising it here, Chair, because as some members will be aware, prior to my time on this council back in 2016, um, my Sinn Féin party colleague and former Enniskillen councillor, Debbie Coyle, proposed that our council introduce a workplace policy on domestic abuse and domestic violence, and it was subsequently introduced. And it wasn't only intended to benefit our own council staff, but to show leadership to organisations in our council area. And I know that has been the case. Um, because I know of others, uh, organisations locally who have um, subsequently introduced similar workplace policies. So Chair, I'd like to propose, if I could, that we as a council um, could write a letter of support to uh, Rachel Woods MLA in, uh, for the Private Members Bill and that we would enclose and commend our own workplace policy to her as an example of a good workplace policy and also highlighting um, our position that good workplace policies on domestic abuse and violence are key to the introduction of any legislation on paid leave for victims of domestic abuse. And Chair, I think it's also just important for us to recognise the good work that has been done here at local government level by our council. I think we can often uh, be guilty on calling for others to do this or that. And, you know, indeed, our, our role as representing the residents of the district does involve um, some lobbying of other government departments and statutory bodies on, on our residents' behalf. However, I think our introduction of this progressive workplace policy back in 2016 is an excellent example of local government really working for our local people and in our council leading the way. So if I could make okay. that proposal, Chair and Gormaga, thank you. That's fine. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Feely, are you going to second that? Yeah, yeah, I just want to agree with everything Siobhan said there. And I do, I do remember De Debbie proposing at the back in 2016. It's a long time ago now, but I do remember and happy to propose Siobhan's. Okay, thank you. Siobhan's thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Okay, we have proposal and seconder. And are we all agreed? I take silence as um, agreement. That's unanimous agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Curry. Important points made there. Thank you. Um, members, we're moving on now to part two, confidential business. So um, we will just take a few moments to um, ensure that um, our tape is stopped. And if I could have a proposer and I seconder. I've got, sorry, there's a lot of voices. I've got hard. Councillor Thornton has his hand up there proposed to go into confidential business. Could have a seconder, second please? Councillor Warrington. Councillor Warrington, thank you. Um, and we'll just pause the tape at this point. Let me go. Thank you. Okay, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Chair while in committee, the councillors or sorry, members confirmed and signed the confidential minutes of the council meeting held on the first of December, from which there were no matters arising, and considered the confidential reports of the Environmental Services Committee held on the second of December, the confidential report of the Regeneration and Community Committee meeting held on the eighth of December, the confidential report of the Policy and Resources Committee meeting held on the ninth of December, the confidential report of the regenerate sorry reconvened. Regeneration and Community Committee meeting held on the 14th of December, the confidential minutes of the Planning Committee meeting held on the 16th of December, and the reconvened Planning Committee meeting held on the 17th of December. Members also received an update in relation to a recent data breach and the ongoing investigations in relation to that chair and resolved a position in relation to those matters. Just a proposed chair. That's uh, Councillor McCann proposed, Councillor Warrington to second. Thank you very much. Um, okay, that's us. The meeting is concluded. Thank you, members, for, for your attention this evening and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Good night.